What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Natsu and I'm here with D-Nag, what's up? Today we're going to be talking about Skyrim once again because I found out some information that they are going to be adding another update in 2023, not sure when it's going to happen, but apparently they're going to be adding a marketplace for all the modders and developers out there that are basically spending weeks, months, even years to develop these mods that can totally change the way the game is played, the way the game is looked at graphic wise, um, followers, anything that you can change about the game, they're going to be setting up a marketplace. And like I said, this is just from my understanding of what I've researched about it, but I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be another way for modders of the community and developers of the community to get pretty much a good paycheck out of it which is totally fine in my opinion because I mean if you are spending let's say weeks on end or months or like I said even years developing a mod for Skyrim and you're putting all that time into it and basically taking time out of your day or your life to do something like that you should get at least a little decent paycheck out of it yeah that's just my opinion I agree and I mean other than that uh, there is no other news about other scrolls at the moment um, other than we're nearing the release for Elder Scrolls 6, obviously not this year, but maybe not even next year, but who knows. Because I know it's supposed to be releasing around 2024, or maybe late 2024, early 2025. But other than that, yeah, there's really nothing else to discuss about Elder Scrolls 5 or 6 at the moment. But we're also going to be talking about 2K23, and I'll let you kind of take off with that and talk okay. about what you've found out. So as we all know, WWE 2K23 is coming out next week. I believe it's the 16th, if I'm not mistaken. I was supposed to say, yeah, it's 16th or the 17th. Something like that. Um, so any of the things that we've kind of seen now is coming out is... Um, that they're kind of, that they're changing my GM mode up a little bit. They're bringing back the archetypes like bruiser, technician, fighter, bruiser, giant. But they're also adding in uh, that what was it? Star. star. They're adding star rating. Now. Yep. And it's not like four star, five star. It's a one star, but it's how many parts of the star are filled for each superstar. So like if you have, even if the match type, the character types don't kind of fit well you might still get a good match out of it if they are both like really high star ratings mm -hmm. like if they're a full star or even like a four what, what was it one two three i think it was like five yeah something like that. five parts yeah so it's like they're kind of almost all of the way a star or like a little bit really close right. and they may still put on a really good match regardless compared to which will probably which i hope will kind of even out the uh, the way those matches kind of end up because it seemed like back in 2K22 if you didn't have two people that were a good fitting it would just kind of classic be like type a, it'd be a really bad match yeah and uh, I mean with that being said you also have the new match types that you can finally do you know, one on one tag team. What was it? Triple Threat. Yep. Um, Fatal Four Way. And then you got all those different All the match certain types. other types of matches that you can do now, which will be really yeah. nice to make instead of just the basic ones, I think, that were being done. Like, yeah, I think it was just like one on one, two on two. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe I heard they are adding mid card titles into GM mode, which will be really nice. So that way, instead yeah. of just having women's title and you know the main title you can have that mid card title to kind of keep your brand whatever you choose whether it be nxt um apparently they're also bringing back wcw for gmo too so you'll have managers okay. like eric bischoff um they're also adding in xavier woods tyler breeze um yeah, adam I pierce and i, I want to say i'm not sure who else is a manager for gm mode but I know those are some of the people you can use as a manager. Yeah. And another thing that I also found pretty cool was, you know, the opening budget, something yep. that you can finally take over. You could use the max budget, which is 3.25 mil, or you could, I mean, if you wanted to do a challenge where you can only use like 100,000 or however low it can go, yep. I mean, you could 
do a challenge like that for all the video creators out there, or content creators, my bad. And you could do like different challenges like that, or you know, I've seen people do like jobbers only, or European wrestlers only, or American wrestlers only, just stuff like that for the content creators out there. Um, they have also done a shake up. I don't know if that means like during the GM mode you can. Yeah, it'll switch. be like they're. Yeah, it's kind of like their show shake up, their shake ups that they do when like some people transition to going to the other brand, some people won't. Right. Where like after, I maybe it'll do the same thing. Where like after WrestleMania, there'll be different people on different right. on the different shows that'll swap up. You can change the different draft order. I think, as far as I saw, I think so. And then another thing I thought was cool about Xavier Woods' uh, manager specialty is the fact that you can literally steal somebody from another show for I think just a week, but you could be like, hey, you know. Theoretically, obviously. Hey, he's not treating you right. Why don't you come over to my brand and we can see what we can do over here for a week or however long it allows you to do. Okay. And then, I mean, other than that, I think GM Mode's going to really kick ass this year. Um, Hopefully. And then we have Universe Mode. Yes, that one's going to be... Big changes <laughs> with Universe Mode. Um, let's see, there's... I mean, with rivalries. This oh, is, yeah. Yeah, I, I love the whole rivalry dynamic now where it's pretty much, you know, like like I said, the main thing I'm going to probably use in my universe mode when we get to that point, um, I'm, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of, like, loser leaves town matches after I build up the Yes, you line. have the different yeah. custom matches that you can right. do now that you'll you'll be able to make those custom matches and different matches now which is what I saw is that another gonna, gonna be another like custom thing that you do, you can do which they usually have some pretty good custom um, customizing abilities like yeah. different titles and whatnot. I did see you only have uh, 100 image slots for okay. character creation I think or something like that I'm not going to remember how much it was um but they still they have in quite a few new arenas as well, oh, yeah, bringing back some arenas like uh, Clash of the Castle, yeah. um, Day One, which isn't in their um, range of shows now. I don't remember how long it lasted. I think it was. Um, I think it was just the one year that they tried to do it. Yeah, and then it didn't work out so well. Yeah. Um, but you have all that sort of stuff. Well, when coming back into my universe, my universe mode that is a really good, good thing that I've been excited for that I heard was in the different factions, you can have you can have people being in a faction and in a tag team too, yeah. where they'll be, you can stem off different factions into multiple other things. Like you can have, say like the Bloodline, the Usos are a tag team, but then they're also in the Bloodline, which will be really, really nice. Which then hopefully you can stand, you can st extend that off and be like, well, this person and this person are a tag team, but they're also part of this faction. Right. Which is where I also saw that I think, I don't remember if it's just the Usos entrance, but there is not only is there a Roman's dual title entrance, but the Usos and the tag team titles will also have a dual entrance as well, which is really nice. Now I hope. It'd be nice if eventually you could do that with virtually any title. Hopefully, it's not just the two, the unified, yeah, the unified Universal Championship and just the unified tag team right. titles. I hope you can do like maybe like the Intercontinental in the United States, right, or I think that'd be or cool. have the the Universal Championship and the tag team championship. Yeah. That would be nice as well, where you can do that entrance, but also have. Um, different titles and not just the two those yeah. those four, uh, four titles that you can do yeah. um, after that my rise is going to be interesting this year they have yeah. a separate they have a separate um, storyline for the women's division and a separate storyline for the men's division which I think will be interesting to see the different how different the titles are the yeah. uh, titles how different the stories <laughs> are my bad no, um That'll be nice to see as well. I think it's, it sounds like they're definitely went to the different in, um, what do I want to say? 
changes they did to 2K22, I think was really a definitely of a turn for the better. Yeah. And now they're going to improve on it this year, which is really nice to see the improvements that they're making. I think they're going in a very good direction now. And I mean, it's kind of like I was just saying the other day, you know, one thing I wish 2K22 had was more story-driven My Rise mode. Yeah, because this My Rise, miss, yeah, was definitely, yeah, it was, it it was definitely bland. It of, uh, I mean, I'm talking 2K23 now. Um, when I saw that there was actually going to be like actual match objectives instead of just oh attempt to win or win the match and this is this will dictate how your storyline goes. I mean I get the fact that they wanted to bring in the whole you know feel like you can do anything. I appreciate that and I think this year like I mean like you said it was a turn for the better and now they're pretty much capitalizing on it and bringing back that kind of story driven my rise mode. But yeah. also, it'll have, you know, side quests, quote-unquote, um, where you can still go out and do whatever you want to, but it's also going to have that story factor in the main quest line, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And then, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I know. Or, I guess, no, because that, that tied in with the universe mode, the whole rivalry thing that I was just talking about. The only other really thing that I know is that they've definitely kind of smoothed out some of the menus make them feel really nice and smooth especially oh, with the yeah. character creation they don't have a background for it it's just a nice gray background where you can actually see what you're doing um the model i think as far as i heard that the character creation models are going to be really close up par with the actual models of superstars yeah. which will be really nice too that they don't seem almost that you can tell that they're really generated compared to um Compared to the actual scanned out models, I think right. as far as I heard that they were going to be pretty close to par, which will be really nice to see because you could tell with your character and their characters is like it doesn't really look that good. look that good <laughs> compared to most people. Yeah, how much would be nice? And the thing I'll be interested to see is how many challenges come out where people are like, well, who can who can you beat? Manage to beat, and how much do you have to do to beat Roman? Right. To beat Roman Reigns in this game, considering he's a 99 overall this year. Yeah. Which will be really interesting to see, especially if you put it on. They'll probably have what Legend mode or Hall of Fame mode for the biggest difficulty, I think, or something like that, um, where he'll be virtually impossible to beat. And I yeah. definitely think that would be cool to see how many people you could actually. How much you have to do with certain like maybe lower overall people? Right. Um, to how much you have to do and how many stops you have to pull out to beat Roman, right. especially if you do something like an extreme rules match or a Hell in a Cell match, yeah. or even a submission match, something like that, where you have to do everything possible and beat him with every, virtually every bit of weapon you can use. And do everything and see how many people you can actually beat them with. I mean, I think I, part of me likes the fact that a lot of these male wrestlers on the roster now in the game have very close to a 90 overall. So that way it's not just a walk in the park on my rise or a walk in the park in universe mode. Like you actually have to step up and have a, you know, face the challenge of facing like, for example, Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Or, you know, Kevin Owens or Brock Lesnar, yeah. just to name a few. Um, let's see, there's also, just have it go on. I, I gotta think of what I was just about to say. I think it'll be, it, the game's just gonna be definitely interesting, and I'm, I'm really excited to start playing it and get some, you know, hopefully we can get some content going and. Yeah. Make some videos on it. We can possibly have a universe mode thing possibly going. Yeah. Or going to be attempting to end the works as soon as we can get something going. Um, but it's I definitely am excited for it. And... I mean, there's also uh, the Advanced Creation. Yes, for Advanced Creations for Entrances is coming back, which is really, yeah. really nice because... Even creating um, entrances for your characters is really kind of lack when it's just easy creations where you try and copy some motions where it's right. kind of like, why? It looks blocky and it doesn't look right, but now you can create, you can increase the amount of pyro people get, as far as I saw. Yeah. Um, 
where like some people you can like Cody Rhodes he I mean you know that in most places he has a lot of pyro it seems like they basically <laughs> use their entire budget for pyro on his entrance sometimes and sometimes they don't but you can use that as adjustment slider and in the advanced creations and make it to the point where he has a lot of pyro um it'll be nice to for your even your own characters where you can create a really nice and smooth entrance however you want to do it and adjust the lighting the pyro and whatnot which is also the one other thing that's really big i remember now is the ai a difficult the ai tendency uh, slider that you can oh, do yeah. it that's what where where you can do like say like the big guys like brock lesnar omas all those big guys you're never going to see them diving off the top rope <laughs> but yet sometimes in 2k22 it seemed like sometimes you were having some of those guys like but you never do that in an actual match why would you be doing that in the game where you can actually go in and adjust their slider and reduce some of those stuff like diving off the top rope or submissions you can adjust that virtually down to zero and, and Almost nine times out of ten, every match they're not gonna do something. Yeah. Cause, but then eventually you may get that one time where they're like, okay, but you're not gonna be perfect on it, obviously. But it's still nice to see that you can go in and if you can adjust somebody's tendencies, if you know exactly like, if you know that this is what they would do, this is not what they would do, and this is what they would do. You can adjust those sliders to make it more technical and make it closer to the real, real thing that they would actually do in a match. Which will be nice. But that's... I am, again, really excited for this game. Can't wait for it. It will be the... I don't think there's any new, new information about it as of today. Because we already, we already know that they're putting more games in. War Games is going to be really, really fun. We already know they're putting Clash, Clash at the Castle, and then day one for the pay-per-views. Yep. Um, we already know pretty much like you said, the sliders, yep. the universe mode, GM mode, um, advanced creations, it's, all that yeah. stuff. So I think as of right now, that's as far as we can kind of extend the news for it yeah. until it gets actually released and yep. like you said it's probably going to be one of the best wrestling simulation games out there once it drops yes that'll be nice and i can't wait to get my hands on it and then yep. obviously like you said we'll be working on some stuff for the channel yep. content wise so stay tuned for that um but i guess the last topic our main to... our main topic <laughs> of the day is how many games we have nowadays that require internet connection like it's just even if they aren't an online game right which really kind of ticks me off sometimes if you are not an online game i should not need internet to right. play your damn game i mean it's kind of like skyrim I can still play that offline, even though if I was online, I could download mods. Could yes, do you can download that. that stuff. But if but I don't I have don't internet need... connection, right? if I'm one of these people where, like, say, you miss a bill on internet, and you get right. it shut off for a while, and you can't pay it. Right. Well, then, but some games, you if you still game, if you're like us, if you have still games, you can't play it. Some games now, well, a lot of, lot of games are going towards you have to have an internet connection in order to play their game, but, like, why? You're not an online game. Yes, I get it, you have an online store, but right. that shouldn't matter. I you think, shouldn't completely prevent me from playing your game right. if I don't have an internet connection. And honestly, and, some of us, and then sometimes even, like, mobile hotspot on your phone you can do. Yeah, you can right. do that for so long, but it takes up so much data, then once you're wiped out, you're done. Until it resets, and, I mean, by the time it resets... You could just be start, restart the cycle over again. You pay the bill, it comes back on, you forget yeah. to pay it, or you don't have enough money, yeah. and then you're sitting there using your data again for a mobile hotspot, and then that runs out. And, and it's just an endless, cycle. vicious cycle, but it's like, it's still, it's the point of like, why? It's like, say like, I God, I don't remember what games they were. It was one of the recent ones that I played that required an internet connection. I think you can actually play it. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. I but I know, I know there's a quite a, I know there's quite a bit of games that you have to have an internet connection, whether it's a single player or a multiplayer game. Well, obviously, duh, it's multiplayer. You need an internet connection. But yeah. some of the single games that you have now that you need internet connection with them. And it's like, 
and no, maybe it's also just companies more focused on we need to get it out to as many people as we can, we need to get people out on, you know, whatever, we need to get money coming in from it, it's just a money grab, in my opinion. Because I think if companies actually gave a shit, and I'm not pardoning my French on that, they actually gave a shit, they would actually sit down, and I'm not saying every game... They would make an game... option where it's like, yeah, you could play it offline. Er, oh, okay. I remember, I remember now. It was NBA 2K22, I think they are on now. 2K22? Or 23 Is it 23? Yeah. Where I can't play, you cannot play your, uh, your My Career guy without an internet connection. It will literally prevent you from playing My Career See, without an internet connection. See, that's stupid. Like, I went, like, almost three... Three, four weeks, I think it was, without playing my career when I wanted to time and time again on the new game with my new guys, but I couldn't because you have no... I, if you don't have an internet connection and you're out of data on your hotspot, and sometimes <laughs> there's issues with that where if you use so much data, then you won't have anything where it'll be significantly slower on the next month when it resets, right. and then it'll have trouble with the internet connection anyway, where it's like, what, what, do, you, what do I do? I literally can't play your game besides playing like play now or quick play right. and stuff like that. And sometimes it's even uh, even like my league. I don't know if you can do my league in that without an internet connection or not. But that was the one biggest thing that I had where I was like, and then Madden was the same way too. Yeah. Madden was the other one where if I didn't I didn't have an internet connection around the same time, so all my characters or all my game files for like different teams that I I you know want to control as or different stuff. Yeah. For my, uh, my, I don't remember the mode of that, my NFL or something like that, I don't know. Um, but it was like, if I made one that was an online server, where you can do an offline server and an online server, but where it's like, I can't play those online ones without an internet connection, so I have to create a whole nother thing. But in that, in Madden, when you create one offline, then it gives you a completely different avatar compared to what you had if you choose a player. Where it cho chooses a completely different face, and it's something completely different. And even sometimes the rosters aren't exactly updated like the new new rosters are, where it's like, this is just a great value version of that, and right. I, it, it makes it dull, and it's like, yeah, I still have fun, but it's like, this isn't really fair. And my, my career on NBA was my biggest problem, too, because I'm like, I'm sitting here and I want to play your game, but you won't let me without an internet connection. Right. Like, I can't play that mode. It's not able. It's, <laughs> See, my opinion is they should make the base game what everyone goes to buy their game for, like, in your instance, my, or my career. Or yeah. Game. My career, or in 2K's instance for WWE, My Rise, you should make your base game what people go to play your games for able to be played offline because I tried loading up 2K22 this morning to see if I could still play like Exhibition or something like that. I can't. It immediately clicks me out of it and says, you need to be online. Why? I could go hop on to probably like 2K19 disconnected from the internet and yeah. I'd still be able to play it. And that was the thing with one of their past NBA games where there was a version of it where if you didn't have an internet connection, you weren't able to access the My City. That it was when they first started coming out with the My City, or My Neighborhood it was. You couldn't access the actual, like, My Neighborhood, and some of the graphics didn't pop up as they would with an internet connection, and I get that. Right. And I can still have fun with that. Right. Because it's like I'm still able to play my guy in my career and do my stuff, but it's just I don't I don't get to access the online version of it, which, okay, I don't care. Because right. I don't, anymore, the NBA, like, the, the 2 cake. The 2K community in those kind of games, sometimes they get a little toxic anyway. Right. Where it's like you go into the rec center sometimes, and I get nine times out of ten in the past games, where people hog the ball anyway, or people go on with three or four in their team and leave one spot out, you're never going to get the ball. And their internet connection, and your internet connection can sometimes be so slow and so lagged that once you get the ball, it freezes so much and it lags so bad that you have to pass the ball away because otherwise you're going to get yelled at and freaked out at. Yeah. and get nagged at on the game because you can't do anything because you look bad but it's like well but if my guy freezes right here with the ball as soon as you pass it the first time what am I supposed to do 
Right. And then sometimes the shot meters can be so delayed in those versions where I'm like, I don't, I've literally stopped playing any of my, uh, any of like the rec center, the leagues, or whatever those are in mm-hmm. a, in NBA 2K. I've stopped playing those because I'm like, I just want to play in the NBA. Right. I just want to go to the team practices, go to the NBA and play some games. That's it. That's all I want to do. And another game that made no sense to me that I should need to be online is the Demon Slayer game that I have. Yeah, you're just playing the story. Yeah. Why do I need internet to play the base game of that game? Yeah. There's no, as far as I know anyway, there's no multiplayer online. There's nothing. No. It's just a game. Why do I need to be online to sit there and complete the game? Yeah. Or it's like, I think the game, I think the 2K one was uh, 2K18, I think it was, when they first mm-hmm. introduced, yeah. uh, introduced my neighborhood. I think so, yeah. I think I had a power forward for the Chicago Bulls, I think it was, that I had, but I had no internet at the time, no Wi-Fi, so I'm like, there. that was what I enjoyed about that specific game, because it was like, well, I can still, as much as the gameplay was like, eh, but I, you could still play the neighborhood, and you could still play, like, not neighborhood, you could still play the my career, but you just couldn't access my neighborhood. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care. I don't want to access my neighborhood anyway. I just want to play the game. That's what the point of my career is. I want to play in the NBA as my created player. As my specific play style. That's all I want. So why force me to have an internet connection and not be able to access it if there's a situation where I don't have internet? Why force me to have an internet connection when some of us just want to play in the NBA? Where we hate the we're not hate but where we don't enjoy playing in the online versions anyway where it's like i just want to go to the nba i just want to play my games in the nba with the team that i've selected because it feels... why force me to have an internet connection when i don't want to access your online shit anyway mostly because it feels to me like at this point game yeah. companies are just forcing online multiplayer bullshit on everybody yeah because it's it's all it's all the rage now online oh, yeah. multiplayers um those battle royale type of games you see so many cop off versions of this game or this game or this game where it's like it's almost forced because people know that people are a lot of game companies know that people are going to play it and people are going to buy it so they force it down people's throats because it's like but why (laughs) like where it's like oh we want to create a community of people that play this game that you can share and you can play with other people it's like I don't care Sometimes in certain games like NBA with my career, I just want to create a guy, just want to create this play style, this position, go play on this team, and do my stuff on that team. That's all I want. I, sometimes in my opinion, I could care less. I couldn't care any less about playing online or playing in the rec center, or playing with other people, because sometimes they 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 treat like. They treat you like shit. Yeah, they treat you yeah. others like shit. If you don't do good, if sometimes I'm just not as good as other people in a game, they will hear. They will make you know about it. Yeah, Bill, they will you constantly will berate, you. berate yeah. you and specific privately message you on PlayStation and stuff like that. Like, hey, you're trash. I don't care. I I don't have I have more outside of games in my life than playing on here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If I want to come home from working all my life, working for so many hours throughout the day, I just want to spend an hour just playing games. Right. If I have to go online about it, and I go online, try to just enjoy the game, and I get shit on for it, why? What's the point? Or it's like even like games like Spider-Man, like the Marvel Spider-Man. I enjoyed the hell out of those games because I didn't have to deal with anybody on online. Uh, as far as I remember, I don't remember if I needed an internet connection for it either. I was going to say that, and I think what people need to realize, if you spend time putting everything you can into your base game, people are still going to buy it. Yeah. Whether they love it or hate it, who gives a shit? Yeah, people are still going to buy it, and people are still going to play it. It's I just mean, a matter... Sometimes they neglect the people that... Just want to have that single-player experience. Yeah. And then, I focus more on the single player games and more like Spider Man, right. God of War. I love God of War. God of War is my favorite, oh, yeah. one of my favorite series, obviously. Um, I just want to play the game. I don't give two shits about 
playing online with some other people, I don't care. I mean, I'm not saying every company should just oh, yeah. stop making I mean, if it's working, Obviously. Cool, but and especially games like Destiny. Right. Destiny 2, I play. I used to play sometimes quite a bit. You yeah. play it with friends, you go on, you do raids. Yeah, you have I fun. <laughs> there are certain games where I'm okay with it, but not in every game. Like NBA. I don't like that. Yeah. That community is crap. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes that community is crap. That's why in this game, I've never done it. I've never gone to the rec center. I've never done their online stuff. All their seasons that they keep coming out with, I think they're on like season five now. I feel you automatically get the first pass, part of that season progression. Of, I've, I've never gone past that one. Because I'm like, I don't want to. You have to. You don't get any points for the season playing, my, playing in the NBA games, but I could honestly not give two shits. Yeah. I will not play their online game, and I will not play in the rec center because I know exactly how it goes. And maybe it's different. Maybe it's different compared to the game before that. But I don't care because I'm like, I just want to go play in the NBA, go to the team practices, I'm playing on a certain team. That's it. Yep. In Destiny 2, I will play online. I will play online with other people, and that's a no problem because that's a fun game. Yeah, they keep coming out with content. It's a fun. It's enjoyable. I get that. I'm not saying every game that has online is bad. That's not what we're saying. Just saying certain games that are single player preference that are single player oriented should not be online multi should not require you to have an online connection. Because some of us that live paycheck to paycheck, sometimes we'll be honest, we can't pay the bills sometimes. Like we pay the important bills that need to get paid, but sometimes the internet bill falls to the wayside because it's like I don't need that. <laughs> and if we can't pay it, we can't pay it. That's it. The internet gets shut off, that's it. But I should, us gamers should still be able to play those certain games that we want to play, even oh, if we don't <laughs> offline. Simple as that. We should still be able to play at least the base game offline. Yeah. And there are some games that still have that. Such as, like I just said, Elder Scrolls Five. Yeah. Yes, I can turn on the internet and hook it up to the internet and get mods and all that. Or, as in my case, I can play offline and still play the vanilla game, which yeah. I have no problem doing. No. Exactly right. And it's like, that's all we want. Sometimes, us like that, where we just, the certain, and obviously you can't please everybody, but it's like with us, some, some of these people that they can't, sometimes they can't afford it. Sometimes they can't afford to keep the internet. Why See would that? you force me to not be able to play my games that I want to play just because I can't pay my sheep? And I'm not saying, you know, obviously, I'm not saying that's a bad thing either. It, it's a part of life. Inflation is getting getting so high now, and prices are <laughs> prices of everything are getting so high. The eggs. <laughs> you can't wipe your own. You can't wipe your own ass without having to pay somebody four bucks. Fuck no. That's pretty much what it comes down to. I'm not saying that literally, but I'm saying that figuratively. You can't do anything nowadays without having to pay somebody. Yeah. Without having to pay some company a certain amount of money or pay somebody a certain amount of money. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean at the, it's ridiculous. At the end of the day, all it comes down to is we don't care if you have an online whatever for your if, game. Yeah, if you have an online version of it, go for it. But it's like, but give make, us an option right. to have offline. Please. Please. <laughs> Because I'm tired Maybe. of loading up a game that should be able to be played offline and see it go, you need you need to be online to play this game. Yes. Why? Yes. It makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I get it. Three games even, have you updates, even... but it can update once the internet gets turned on. <laughs> yes. Even like some of the cases where you have people that can't afford to get the new version, new game consoles. Right. Where they deliberately start slowing things down and making the game, the console virtually unusable, so you have to get a new console as a game. Some of us can't afford it! Especially when there's rich motherfuckers out there buying 10 of them and going for a YouTube video going, watch me destroy 20 PS5s. Or watch me sell them for $800 a piece. Yeah. Eight, nine, eight, $900, sometimes a thousand. So, I'm gonna be quiet. Sometimes honest. we can't afford it. It's okay. <laughs> I don't care that I can't afford it because that's just part of life. But my problem is is that you deliberately force it on us that sometimes we, if we just want to enjoy playing games and we have an older console, like I had my PS4 for what, about 10 years? Something like that. 
Uh, since I grabbed, since 20... Was it 2018 or was it 2017? It's 2018. Okay, so I... Really? Yeah, I didn't go over that in my classroom right now. Five years. Okay, five years. I was out by five <laughs> years. But still... I know, I know people that still have the original Xbox One that are now saying that that thing is virtually <laughs> unusable because it's so damn slow. Well, that and your loading was... screens on certain games have gotten to the point where you can turn that game on, go out for an hour and a half, and come back and you're finally load just loading into the fucking game. Well, that it's like most of the games that I wanted to play or try out at least that were on Game Pass when I had it. For example, Matrix Awakens or something like that that looked fucking cool as shit and I was like yeah, I want to play it I go to like install it or something and it says not playable on this device well fuck you Microsoft I'm not paying you $800 for a console that's gonna but end I mean, up being the... obsolete in the <laughs> next six years <laughs> well not even six years it'll be obsolete within like the first three years of release because everyone knows as soon as the PS5 and Xbox One Series X dropped they were already working on a PS6 and an Xbox, whatever. Whatever because they're it, going to call it. It's like the phone company, Samsung and you Apple. Get, yeah, you get, you a, get new a new phone, phone and then and the next two months later they yeah. have a new phone coming out afterwards. And I was like, well, what the hell's the point? It, it just... It, I remember the days when you could buy a PS2 and it took maybe like two years and then the PS3 was out. And then it's like, okay, well, I've saved my money up. Now I can buy this. Yeah. Instead of just sitting there like, oh yeah, I just bought a new PS5. Oh, did you hear? They're dropping the PS6. What? Why did I just spend <laughs> 500 bucks, five to 600 bucks on a PS5 now when that's going to come out in the next three years? And with the whole next gen thing, every company is like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this so it's better. I'm going to just end up buying a PC because I already know half of y'all's games are just going to end up on Steam or Epic Games anyway, and I'm just buy it through the PC website, so that way I can have a PC and I don't have to worry about the whole, oh, next gen, next gen, next gen, not playable all on you have to All you have like, to worry about on PC is next part, next part, next part, right. <laughs> next part that is better, but you can still use the last one, or next video card next graphics card that may look that makes it look better but you can still use the one that you have so that's it honestly I see myself buying a PC <laughs> Just, and that's that because all I have to do is sit there and wait yep but that's my the gaming the gaming, commu the gaming community has gotten so big and so big nowadays so much great games coming out that we've always wanted, which is, don't get me wrong, it's really nice. It's just Not everything has to be online and internet connection oriented. It's okay to make an offline version because sometimes we would rather be offline than be online. Please. I know it won't happen. But please lower the fucking prices of your consoles. Event? That's, Jesus. Never, that's never gonna happen. Oh, we no, all that's, know that. That's, that's why, never gonna that's happen. That's why I said I know it'll never happen. It'll never happen, but Jesus. <laughs> Infl inflation has prevented that from ever happening. Well, it's, it's not even inflation, it's just the companies wanting more fucking money because they put so much into their consoles, but yet, like I said earlier, the poor people ain't fucking buying them. Nope. As in middle class and lower. Takes us about when when did the PS5 <laughs> come out? I think two years, two or three years ago? Something like that. Well, I think at least two or three years ago. I'm not educated right now on that. Sorry, but... Don't know the release date for the consoles because who knows when it did. Because who knows when it the took, PS6 it, is coming out. It took forever for us middle class... I couldn't say middle class, but... Working class. Yeah, it, could, it took forever <laughs> for us working class people to get, uh, to get it anyway. So it really didn't matter when it updated or when it released. It just us people that work all the time and work paycheck to paycheck couldn't afford it. That's why it's such a rare sighting for me to see my friends on Snapchat going, I got it. Because thanks to, and I'm not saying all rich people are like this, because I know they're not. Nope. But it's the rich people that are literally out there just going, oh, let me buy 20 and then destroy it's not, half of it's them. Not written. It's not rich people. It's the scalpers. The scalpers make it so hard nowadays to get stuff like that because they set programs up to rapidly buy as many as they can before they sell out, so then they get them all and they sell them at a ridiculously high price and try to make money off of it. 
which unfortunately some people are not that smart. I mean, not smart, I'm sorry. I can't say that. Are not that educated in that stuff where they see one at this price and they'd be like, okay, I have the opportunity to get one. But little did you know, the retail price of those is about mm, four, five hundred dollars less than that. Yep. So instead of paying nine hundred, a thousand dollars for one, you'd be like, yeah, I got my son this. Stop buying from scalpers. Because we're all literally entitled, people, those that buy them from scalpers entitle them to keep doing it. That's why I will always go to the official website or go to Walmart. That is where I, that is where it's kind of like how I got mine, eventually. You, Pia, PlayStation, or Sony, sorry, not PlayStation. Sony made exclusive invites to exclusive servers where you had an opportunity to get where it wasn't from a scalper, it was directly, if you got one of those exclusive invites, you could go into that right at the drop and wait for your turn to get in and you would have an option to buy what what you wanted on there, what they had at the opportunity. It was great. But that's, that's about it. I suppose we've been ranting for what, 40, 41 minutes now? So um, we're gonna end it now. And uh, another video, another, the next episode will be up next Friday again. Yep. Um, hopefully, I'm hoping, hoping really soon that we're going to start making gaming videos. That okay. is going to be a great thing um, to get more content out to all of you. Um, if you've made it this far into the video, I would like to see uh, what game are you looking forward to or... I don't know, currently playing and what's your yeah. opinion on it. <laughs> yeah. Like your opinion on what games you're playing. That would be great. In this video, I would like to see this video up to five likes. That would also be great. Please, if you have not done it already, please subscribe and turn on the bells for notifications. Yes. That would be great as well. Because um, we're at 31 subscribers now. I would like to see that number continue to go up. But, not that's okay. It is what it is, but subscribe please subscribe. Because you can always unsubscribe later if you want to. Yes. Although I would hate to see you unsubscribe anyway. But please subscribe, please like, and share with your friends if you would love to see them or if people would like to hear hear us rant. Um, without further ado, do you have anything else to add, my dear friend? No. All right. Without further ado, we bid you all a good day, a good night, or a good afternoon, whatever, whenever you're seeing this video. Yep. <laughs> and we will see y'all in the next one. Peace.